record on this computer or to the oh it says re i didn't do anything though somebody's recording i'm recording thank you i appreciate that and then you'll just need to share your screen okay sounds good okay and i'm trying to hide this but that's okay There we go. Okay, so yeah, so I'm Emily Hines. Um, I've been introduced before, so I don't think it's uh, super necessary, but I'm the Virginia, or the Cooperative Extension intern for Wise County this summer. So unfortunately, I got just enough rain here over the past couple of days to make it really hard to go out. The hope was to be able to film this to make it a little more interesting um, and to get kind of out of the PowerPoint for a while. Um, but unfortunately, every time I would go out to set up, it would like rain a little bit and then it would stop and then it would rain a little bit. So I never got enough um, actual clear weather to get out there and do anything. So I'm back to PowerPoint, unfortunately, but um, try to make it at least as interesting as possible. So um, a little bit of background. I taught campfire or outdoor cooking at 4-H camp last year. So taught that um, to the 4-H kids who were there and then just done it on and off for several years. Um, I, last year was the first year I'd actually gotten certified in it. But it's super fun, it's super easy. Um, but, so just a little bit first, I guess, about basic hair is mostly just like any cast iron. Um, you don't wanna wash it with soap because it's going to hurt the finish on it. And you always wanna clean it when it's warm, especially when, um, I think more, so when I'm outside, I think it tends to get, like left or put to the side and I'm really bad about just leaving it and then it creates a really big mess, it gets sticky. So try to always clean it like while it's still warm. Um, and then while after you clean it, hopefully while it's still warm, try to like rub a little bit of oil back into it to kind of keep the seasoning in it and the finish in it really well. And then line it with um, a foil or a liner when needed, you don't I wouldn't even recommend doing it every time because it can kind of mess with your cooking times um, just because it's messing a little bit with how the heat is coming through. So I would only really use it if you're doing something pretty sticky or um, I'll do it with like if I'm doing some kinds of breads or stuff because they tend to stick if you're not careful. And a new Dutch oven um, tends to stick at least at first quite a bit until you use it a couple times and really build up that seasoning. I had a pre-seasoned Dutch oven and it worked well. I didn't, um, I didn't season it again before I started using it. So it worked pretty well. Um, and then just every once in a while, I'll go back and I'll actually re-season it if it starts chipping or it looks like it's starting to get um, a rust spot or something on it. But other than that, I just try to keep up with it and try to keep it clean. Um, and then just like techniques basically just me try to start the coals early um i personally prefer charcoal over wood you can definitely do both it just takes a lot more wood you're gonna have to keep an eye on it because the wood i don't personally don't think that the wood um keeps the heat in as well so i normally like to use charcoal um, but either way if you're using wood you're probably going to want to start it like at least 30 minutes early so that way it has time to burn down because you're looking for that white kind of ashy um pieces that you want to use the heat because that's where the really concentrated heat is. If you're using something or trying to use it on a flame, you're going to get hot spots and you're going to get a lot of uneven cooking. So if you want it to cook evenly, you want to give it a time to kind of ash over and burn down a little bit. So try to start it early. Um, if I'm using charcoal, it's probably like 15 minutes early. I use a chimney starter and just kind of leave it in there for about 15, 10, 15 minutes um, and they ash over pretty quickly and I put it. Um, you want to arrange them evenly on the top and the bottom because once again like if you're trying to pile them on um, it's going to create like really uneven pockets of heat so you're going to get burning and then it can also um, eventually it can damage the finish of the Dutch oven because you're putting if you're putting too much on one spot and then leaving. So just try to arrange them evenly it just cooks better. Um, the general rule of thumb is about two coals for every inch diameter that your lid is. So if you have a 10 inch Dutch oven, it's about 
20 coals, that's not exact. Um, but you always want to add more coals to the top than to the bottom. And there's, you can look it up, there are ways to, um, or there's charts out there that are really easy to find. This as like, oh, if you want a 350 degree Dutch oven, then you need this many coals on top, this many on bottom for whatever size Dutch oven you're using. Um, if you go to the Lodge cast iron website, there's one on there that will tell you. So that gives you a little bit more of an idea instead of just shooting in the dark and like piling a bunch of coals on top of it, especially if you're trying to follow a recipe. Um, because the really nice things about Dutch ovens are they're super, super versatile. So you can do just about anything with them that you could do either in an oven or even a lot of things that you do in a slow cooker on our stove top, things like that. So if you're trying to convert a recipe and it says like bake at this temperature for so long, then you get a little bit better of an idea if you want to like look up one of those charts and use it. Um, the two coals per inch of diameter will get you somewhere between 300 and 350 degrees. It's not um, super exact. Adding more coals will obviously like give it a little bit more heat. So if you're finding it's not cooking very well or it's taking longer um, than what it should to cook, then you can always add a few more coals, but I would try to add them evenly to the top and the bottom. And I'll hope it cook a little faster. Um, also, pretty important is to try to turn it every few minutes. So like, I would say probably 15 or 20 minutes, I would give it like a turn um, that just keeps, excuse me, keeps it even. Um, and I would turn like the actual Dutch oven one way, and then you turn the lid the opposite way. So, but just keeping that going, even when um, things that take like an hour or more to cook, a lot of your meats and things like that will take quite a while. It becomes more important than, than if you're cooking like a 10 or 20 minute dessert or something like that, and then you don't really have to worry about it. Um, but if it's one of those longer things, then I would just keep an eye on the time and make sure that you're turning it. So, and this is the part I was really hoping to film um, just because it makes it a lot more interesting. But I'm going to go ahead. A lot of the recipes that I've done are really easy, especially like if you're camping or things like that, like generally the fewer ingredients, the better. Um, and also like the fewer or the less complicated the ingredients, the faster the cook time. So it ends up just being a little easier all the way around. So that's why I normally go with are things that are a little easier, a little faster. I also um, taught a lot to kids and things like that. So I try, I've always tried to do things that are easy to bring um, kids or other people into to teach them. So all of these are pretty easy recipes and a lot of them are very similar to things that you would do at home. So like breakfast, um, French toast, this one is super easy and it's basically just like you would do French toast at home only it makes almost like a bread pudding or a pull apart bread because you're cubing it. So it doesn't work very well if you just place it in slices, it tends to just kind of get soggy and sit there. But I just take French bread and then whatever I normally make my French toast batter out of. So I normally do eggs, a little bit of milk, cinnamon, nutmeg, and a little bit of vanilla. And whatever, whether you do like sugar or don't use it, whatever you want to do as far as spices go, um, I just add that with your eggs or your milk or your cream. And I cut the bread into kind of small cubes instead of slices. That just makes it coat a little better and makes it cook a little better. Um, and then you just combine it all together and just put it in the Dutch oven. This one, once again, because it's, I like to, I would say either spray or line your Dutch oven if you're doing something like bread wise, um, because I think they tend to stick a little bit. And the eggs and the sugar in this one also um, tend to make a little bit of a mess if they're left, they can get sticky. Um, but once you get it in there, I would just put small pieces of butter over the top of it and that kind of helps it keep um, moist through the center of it. The butter will melt down. And this one takes about 30 minutes. It's not super long. It's pretty easy. Um, and you can also do this almost like a monkey bread if you wanted to take canned biscuits. And you could do something very similar to it. Um, but this is a really quick breakfast if you were like camping or something like that and there's not um, a whole lot to this one. The other breakfast is kind of a bit more savory and this is almost like a omelet, a Dutch oven omelet. So all it takes is almost whatever you would put in an omelet. So eggs, um, your meat of choice. I, once again, I like to keep it as simple and as fast as I can most of the time. So I try to do like 
pre-cooked meat, so like cubed ham or pre-cooked bacon, um, smoked sausage, that kind of thing that doesn't really need a lot of cook time. And once again, a Dutch oven, one of the nice things about it is that you can um, use it open, like if you really wanted to, you could take the bottom of it over coals and just leave it open and you could brown your sausage in there or whatever before you put everything else in. So that's definitely an option. It just, you're going to have to add a few more minutes to actually prep that and get it ready. So I prefer using like pre-cooked meats. Um, and same thing with the frozen hash browns, just they're really thin cut, they're frozen. They cook a little bit faster than if you were to get like fresh potatoes and try to cube them or slice them or things like that. So I, I just prefer the frozen ones that they taste fine once you get it in there. Um, cheddar cheese or whatever kind of cheese you like to use, peppers, onions, mushrooms, whatever you like to put in it. And you just basically combine it all together um, and beat the eggs, put that in it, and then just add the cheese on top. And that one again, most of these take about 30 minutes. Some of them take a little longer, but it should take about 30 minutes. And it basically just makes up like uh, either like a breakfast casserole like you would put in the oven or almost like an omelet you would make over the stove. So once again, like this one is pretty easy. Um, these are all stuff like for the most part, you could feed several people out of. Um, there's only one or two that you might have to make a couple. But this one, the French toast one, that should feed four people easily, however many people you've got. Um, and once they don't take super long, so if you needed to do a second one, that's um, a possibility. So for lunch, dinner, I've done this one quite a bit, um, just an easy pizza. This is the one that you probably would need to make more than one of if you were feeding more than two people or maybe even two people, um, just depending on how much you want it. But I definitely probably take at least two to feed three or four people. Um, but you can do this one with just prepared pizza dough or canned biscuits, whichever one you want. Um, I would spray or line the pan with this one. Also, because this one's a flat one, um, it can be a little hard to get out. So if you line it, it can be a little easier to just, just for convenience wise, get out of the oven. And all you're really waiting on this to cook is the dough. So everything else should be already pre-cooked. Um, you either just like spread the biscuit or the pizza dough out on the bottom or you can line it with the um, biscuit dough I or the canned biscuits just kind of flatten them out a little bit and make sure you pinch the edges together so there's no big holes in it um, and take a little bit of olive oil or anything like that um, with garlic Italian herbs whatever you want to use as a sneeze excuse me seasoning and just kind of brush over the top of the crust and then add your sauce toppings cheese whatever you normally put uh, if you had some pre-cooked chicken, you could do like barbecue sauce and chicken, do barbecue chicken pizza, you could do just cheese and pepperoni, um, whatever sauce or toppings that you normally like to use on a pizza. Once again, most of these are already pre-cooked, so they're really easy to do. Um, it takes 20 minutes, maybe 30, depending on how thick the dough that you're using is, but really 20 minutes should do it. Um, so once again, if you need it to do two of them, depending on how many people you were feeding, then it actually gets pretty easy. Um, and this one I did with, I've done with kids quite a bit and it's always um, went over really well and it's really easy. And this is one you can kind of make fancy or not depending on whatever you like. This one is the only one that I put on here that actually takes like a cook time for, like doesn't have um, pre-cooked or already prepared ingredients. So this one you actually have to watch your cook times pretty closely on. Um, but this one is also pretty easy and it's really good. It feeds quite a few people. So all you need is some chicken breasts, a bottle of barbecue sauce, some potatoes, some onion, a little bit of water. And it's just like a barbecue chicken. It's got potatoes, onion in it. Um, I would half the chicken breasts just then make them a little thinner because it takes a while for them to cook. And you're looking at about an hour, 45 minutes to probably upwards of an hour anyway. Um, so just the thinner your pieces are of the more evenly a little bit faster that they'll cook. Um, slice your vegetables, your potatoes, onions, whatever you want to put in it. Once again, like keep your slices kind of thin um, if you want them to cook a little faster and cook a little bit more evenly. And just a little bit of water, it doesn't take much. That just kind of keeps everything from sticking. Um, the barbecue sauce can burn. So the water kind of keeps it from sticking and burning quite so bad. And you literally just put all of it in cooks for about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, it can take longer depending on how much you're cooking and how big your pieces are. 
So I would say for this one, definitely have a food thermometer on hand. Um, chicken should always reach 165. So if it's not at 165 degrees, then it should probably be cooked a little longer. Just because it's one of the, like cooking with raw meat requires just a little bit more time. Um, and it can be dangerous to eat if it's below the 165. So just temp it. I would go 45 minutes, open it and temp it. And then if it's not reached, then go ahead and cook it for another little while. Um, but this one, it takes a while, but it's really easy. It doesn't have a whole lot of prep to it. Um, and this one feels a little bit more like an actual meal. So, and this one's really good. Desserts, this is one, um, this was one we did at camp all the time, mostly because it's really easy. It turned out really, really good. Um, and it's just a basic cobbler, it's almost like a dump cake. So when I got certified, this was the first, this was the dessert we learned because it was pretty quick and easy and it doesn't really take anything that's in a lot of danger of spoiling. Um, so it's just cake mix, pie filling and butter. Um, I always use a yellow or like a butter recipe cake mix. And then we did, we've, I've done cherry, I've done apple, I've done peach. Um, all of them work really well. I would say, especially for a larger Dutch oven, um, you really need two cans of pie filling per box of cake mix, simply because it tends to stick and burn. There's not, if there's not a whole lot of fruit there, um, the fruit kind of gets burnt to the bottom of it. And then just a stick of butter to put over the top of it. Um, this one probably wouldn't hurt to spray or line the Dutch oven because it can get kind of sticky, um, especially the fruit, and especially if it's overcooked at all. The fruit kind of sticks and burns to the edges of the pan. That being said, I have actually never done that. Um, I've just always cleaned it out while it's warm. I've never had much of a problem with it. But if you like, if you're concerned about it sticking or anything like that, I would, or if you're making like a bigger batch, I had a, I have a small Dutch oven, um, then I would probably go ahead and say line it or spray it with something just to be on the safe side. But you just put the pie filling in um, the box of cake mix and you don't want to stir it, you just want to leave it and just cut a stick of butter up into small pats and place it around the top and that what, that's what melts and is going to bake your cake mix. And this one takes 20 or 30 minutes. When we did it, um, really about 25 minutes every time worked. Um, and this one was another one that fed, I had I think a 10 inch Dutch oven at camp and we had enough for like eight kids. It makes quite a bit, especially if you're using the two cans of pie filling. So, but this one, definitely if you're not going to use it all, you need to get it out while it's still warm or it will make, it's gonna make a really big mess really quickly. And just stick it as it gets cooled, it kind of hardens and gets really sticky on the sides. So it needs to be cleaned up pretty quickly. And then this one is also really easy, um, maybe a little bit more prep, but nothing, hard at all. It's just a brownie mix and then refrigerated cookie dough. Um, and this one, once again, I've never really um, lined my Dutch oven for this one and I've never really had much of a problem with it, but if that's something you're concerned about, I would definitely um, say it's not going to affect it too much. You just have to keep an eye on how they're baking. Um, but you just make your brownie mix however the box says, so the oil, water, eggs. I would say I don't, um, I'm not the biggest fan of like really gooey brownies or desserts. So I think it bakes a little better. Like the boxes a lot of times will give you like a fudgy option or a cake or cake like option. I would generally go a little bit more toward the cake like. I think it bakes a little better. Um, the fudgy ones tend to stay really thick at the bottom. They don't cook very well. Um, but you just make it according to the directions, whichever way you want, pour in the Dutch oven and then take just small pieces of cookie dough and just plop it around the top. Same thing you would do if you were making this in like an oven or something like that. Um, and this one takes quite a while, the brownies take a while. So like 40 to 50 minutes, depending on how done you like them, um, sometimes a little longer. And like I said, I like them done. I like them cooked totally all the way through. Um, so mine definitely lead more toward that 50 minutes, maybe even closer to an hour before I call them done. Um, but if you like them a little softer, a little more gooey then the 40 to 50 minutes is definitely enough. 
Um, and this, like, all of this is just ideas and basic stuff. Um, once again, anything that you can do, you can do stews, you can do soups. If you can make it in, especially like if you can make it in a slow cooker, you don't have to adapt anything very much to do over a campfire. It just might take a little bit longer to cook, um, depending on where you are in your conditions and like what kind of coals you're using and that kind of stuff. But it's really pretty easy. Um, you can use it. I've seen people make enchiladas um, and you can make vegetarian ones where it's just the tortillas and some vegetables and black beans and sauce and cheese. Or I've seen people like take it and if you have another skillet, it's great. Um, if not, I've seen people brown meat and stuff in the bottom of the Dutch oven before they add the rest of the ingredients in, so that's possible. Um, I have something, it's just a four-in-one tool, so I use it as a hook for the Dutch oven, but it also folds out into a nice little like cook stand, so you could actually use that if you have like a cast iron skillet or something like that. Um, it makes it pretty easy to cook with. Um, so it's a pretty handy little tool to have and I wish that I'd had it with me or I'd show it to you. Um, but like I said, yeah, this was very short because I wasn't able to film. I wish the weather had cooperated. It would have been, I at least think it would have been quite a bit more interesting. Um, but if you can do it in an oven, you can make bread, you can make biscuits. Um, anything you want. I've seen people take two Dutch ovens if you want, if they were making um, like the barbecue chicken or something like that and stack the Dutch ovens. I've never done it um, myself, so I don't know like long-term how that's going to do, but I don't, I wouldn't see any problem with it. Um, I would probably do it if you were low on space and just have two things cooking at once. You can do a main dish and a side dish um, and it's fairly easy, but Unfortunately, without my videos, that is all I have, but we're going to have to dock your pay, Emily. I know. <laughs> no, that's not, I'm not meeting my time requirements. <laughs> you did a great job. That's good. Great information. Definitely. Yeah. I, I have a question. I hopefully others will have questions, but I have a question and maybe I missed it along the way. But uh, when you start your coals, uh, at, at, what, at what phase do they need to be before you add them to the Dutch oven, on top or on the, uh, on the bottom or wherever? So I do it at the same, and I wait till they get, I don't know what you would call it, but I give them about 10, 15 minutes. I want them um, white and kind of ashy over to where, like, they're kind of starting to flake off because that's when they get hot enough they're not, like, burning anymore and I don't want anything that's actively burning um, especially like for a while I decided I didn't really like it but I was using like the easy start charcoal that's got the coating on it um, and you can't really use that in the chimney starter so I decided I didn't really like that pretty quickly um, but especially if you're using something like that I would wait for um, whatever coating is on it to burn off I know like I think it says like food safe or whatever but I just wait till they get like white and ashy about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're using wood, I would wait till at least like, I don't want to put anything that's actively flaming on top of the Dutch oven or under the Dutch oven. I wait until it burns down before I put anything anywhere. Cool. Thank so, you. Yeah. Otherwise you just get a lot of hot spots um, and it can damage the coating after a while in the Dutch oven and it can cause like burnt spots in your food. So Okay, good deal. Thank you. Any other questions? Excuse me, I'm sorry. Quarantine. <laughs> Quarantine me from the pollen, and that would be much better. That was great. Good job. Now you've starved us all to death. Exactly, exactly. When she started on that French toast thing, I thought I was going to lose it. <laughs> I do that for dessert, actually, way more than breakfast, but that's okay. But that would be good. Yeah, that would be great. Let's see, Phil's back. Yeah. Um, Serious? 
at, at least I found out when I uh, assigned co-host to, to other people that if I vanish, my internet goes out and it continues. So that's good to know. We continued and did not talk bad about you to your face. Four times. No, we did not talk bad about you behind your back. Well, I, I appreciate that. No. Bill, when you've got one of those wall mount phones, you have to turn that handle. A few <laughs> Hey, we're uh, it's it's still Monday over here where I live. I'm I'm in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> well, she did a great job. We put her in for a raise. Absolutely, and um, I was just counting up the weeks, and unfortunately, she's over halfway uh, now through her internship with us. So, uh, you know, it's it's gone by quick, but. Uh, yeah, I didn't. I didn't realize we were that. I thought we we're somewhere. Or more. Around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you'll have to watch it on record. Um, I believe Jeremy recorded it. So okay, I'll, 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 I'll get that sent to you guys. Well, good job. Uh, good seeing everybody. Definitely. I missed you guys. Missed you guys last week. So good to see everybody on. Uh, Wednesday, we've got another good program. We've got uh, Marcus Bowling with the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources. He's going to be talking about boating and water safety. So that should be a good one. Uh, and, the, and, and you mentioned that is tomorrow night, not, not Thursday. It is tomorrow night, yes. Uh, we're not doing due to who uh, Marcus, uh, he couldn't, he wasn't able to uh, uh, meet with us on Thursday night and he said can you do Wednesday and so we uh, shed Phil and I decided that yeah we can do Wednesday so hopefully you all can join us tomorrow evening at six o'clock uh, for boating water safety should be a good one uh, Marcus is uh, I guess you could say Marcus is one of us Marcus is from uh, is from originally from Whitesburg so uh, he's from the mountains he's he understands the mountains so uh, uh, I look forward to uh, having him on tomorrow night and that's boating, not voting, correct? Boating and water safety. <laughs> Is that uh, cover paddle boats? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> paddle boats, canoes. <clears throat> well, see you all tomorrow. Y'all cool. have a good evening. Thank you. Have a good one. Thanks, Thank Emily. Thank you, Emily. Great job.